You know what people have told me on this one? What? This is the most ridiculous remark that I think I've gotten on all of YouTube in a long time. What was it? Tell me. Okay, this is... <laughs> this super beetle here, you guys have seen me cut a bunch of pieces out of it earlier in this video. And I talked about it in a previous video, and so many people said, and this happened a lot, you have no idea what you're getting into. <laughs> I got nothing. I... <laughs> and you know what? This is really? the funny part. Some of these people that commented that are regulars. So they've been around to They've see... been around. They've seen Eleanor. They, well, we hope they've seen Eleanor. But there's been so many people that have told me we'd love to see a restore a beetle. So there's people that just, I don't know, they missed that too. I mean, I, I would say that Eleanor might be the flagship project of my YouTube channel. Wow. wow. That was Biddy with his collar on. I put it in a different Did spot. Did he knock it off? No, it's on. That was a long, just screech, like, like brakes. Nails on a chalkboard something. That's a different sound than he usually does. <laughs> Even with the collar off. Anyway, yeah, people think that um, I don't know what I'm getting into, then this is probably going to be a whole lot more work. There is no beetle that has ever been more work that I have ever accomplished, and probably anybody else that's been connected to me that's helped on Eleanor, than Eleanor herself. This beetle is, this is, this is not anything like that at all. This is not I mean, what you guys saw me cut out of it, that's all the damage that needs to be fixed. This thing's got rust and it needs some repairs, but there's only one spot of rust that's up underneath here. And one of the reasons why we took the body off, despite the hole only being, I don't know, maybe that big, it, it's probably not even that big. But it's up underneath one of the heater channels, and of course I had to get the body off, otherwise I couldn't get any tools under there to fix it. But that's one of the things we're going to attack today before we get to anything else. It's about 95 degrees in the shade right now, it's about 10 a.m. Wild Bill just came by with uh, some Tabasco peppers that were grown by a local friend of ours, Alley Cat, and um, I just ate a handful of them, and I'm burning like hell. So if you hear my, you know, kind of tooth-sucking, lip-smacking kind of sounds, that's, uh, that's me. A little too hot out for uh, <laughs> this kind of peppers today. I don't usually eat those kind of things straight up, but anyway, I did. So if you hear me making funny noises or I don't talk like I normally do, that's probably why. So I've been asked a lot, you know, like, uh, hey, Duckman, why are you working on this thing but not demonstrating the individual things that you're doing, you know, really close up like you usually do? And the reason why is because I'm fast-tracking this. This project has to be done as fast as possible. Robert can't drive right now because he did have a head injury, but he needs this car back together as soon as possible, so that way once he gets better, which is expected probably in the next several weeks, I would imagine, he's going to need a car because the car got totaled out. So it's in my best interest and his to get this thing done as fast as possible. And that means a whole lot less dicking around with camera work and a lot less time in video editing. But that also means more videos for you guys. It'll just be a lot less of the close-up technical stuff. But anyway, we're gonna attack that rust hole. It's up underneath here. <laughs> here we go. Look at that. Here it is. That's the only rust hole underneath this car anywhere. Of all the places that have been looked and inspected, even the places I've looked, that's it. The only other thing I might consider a rust hole is where the lights, uh, where the wiring for the lights come through the rear fender. That hole looks like it had rust around it, so I might just uh, just drill it out bigger and we'll put a, a rubber gogi in there to seal it up. But uh, this one, I probably should come in here with a saw or something and cut it out. But I'm thinking just uh, my tapered drill bit, this really big one, ought to be enough to, to get that thing just cut out yeah I think that's what we're gonna do I'm gonna need two hands though but I already see that we just hit solid metal all the way around it so I'm gonna drill that sucker out and then we're gonna make a nice little plug we're gonna weld it in all nice throw a little paint on it and then we'll put this body back centered on this cart because currently it's a uh, kind of cattywampus because that's the only way I can get under here all right well have at it ow okay not good for my wrist no way Oh, if I were a small person, I probably would have just broke my wrist on that one. Two-handed, that's it. No more screwing around over here. And if you're curious why my hands are so white, it's because I just powdered my balls. 
As I said, it's 95 degrees out here right now, so it's hotter than hell. <laughs> this is a piece of Eleanor. You can probably tell by the color. That was uh, the color that Eleanor came to me as, is jungle green. Um, there's the diamond green on the back side of it. So Eleanor had been repainted at some point. But anyway, here's a little silver dollar we made that's gonna be filling up that hole on the bottom of this heater channel. Donation, courtesy of Eleanor. In her old form. Green Bean technically was her name then. <laughs> well, that happened. Wasn't even in the forecast, but you know, we live on the Gulf Coast. <laughs> yep, getting wet. Thankfully, it'll all dry out because everything's open and exposed. I'm sure Robert watching this video isn't gonna like it very much, but it's what happens, Florida. And if I were to do this work inside of a shop with a roof, yeah, I would charge to the moon for it. Anyway, a little rain ain't gonna hurt nobody. Finally stopped raining. Everything out here is dried up. We're good. Floor pans, everything. They're a little damp. You see some puddles on there, but that's only temporary. We'll be fine. But over here, just before it started raining, we got it on there just in time. I put two coats of paint on there and a horrible glare. Here it is. So anyway, that's all taken care of. So that's good to go. Now we can start doing topside stuff. Want to attack that and that probably next and if I feel like taking a break I'll get in here and I'll chisel out all this stuff and that's where we're at things are coming along Man, did you know? Oh, forgot to unplug something there, Mr. Duckman. You're such an idiot, Duckman. Don't you pay any attention to this stuff? Is this your first Volkswagen ever? <laughs> all right, all this tar board's gotta come out. I gotta inspect behind it for rust. It looks like we found something's nest. Something was living back there. All that's gotta come out. There's a rust spot here, I gotta rebuild that. Wasn't part of the agreement, but I'll take care of them on that, no big deal. Oh, Robert, you and your stupid beetle. Man, we're gonna take care of this thing, because that's what friends do, right guys? Even though I received so much hate on that last video, probably one out of every four comments was complete hate about how I badmouthed poor Robert on his car. And that's not at all what I did. I was griping. And why was I griping? Because you're friends. Well, not because we're friends. If I'm going above and beyond helping a friend in this situation, I have the right to gripe. And I don't care if you don't like it. It's my video, right? <laughs> I'm the one that's extending my neck for somebody else. I'm the one that's taking care of somebody else. Give poor Robert a break. I am giving him a break. I'm working on his f***ing car, aren't I? Jeez, what part of that don't people get? I don't know, I, I don't understand that. And I guess, well, they don't either. And I'm even going above and beyond taking care of the things that we didn't agree to initially, including the stuff that got dumped on top. So guess what? I think I'm a pretty good guy. If you don't like it, well, hit the unsubscribe button and find yourself out the door. I reserve the right to gripe, that's right. And I'm not saying any of this because I'm crying out for attention, so please don't tell me, screw the haters, I don't want to hear that. If you say something like that, you're just as bad as the haters for not listening to my message. This is just a story I'm telling you, you know, when you bring home a story and you say, guess what this idiot at work did today? Yeah, well, that's pretty much what it is. <laughs> We're friends is why I'm doing the work. <laughs> the friends is why I'm taking care of him on this. The friends is why I gave him a little bit of shit, but I'm still taking care of the additional things that I didn't agree to. One of which, this was the biggest part of work right here was this, or the fact that he didn't disassemble the car for me like we expected. I mean, that was the big part of it. I had put a lot more work into taking this car apart that I shouldn't have, that was not part of the agreement. Robert took a little shit for that in, this, in the previous video, and people hated on me for it. But you know, I talked to Robert about it. Robert actually saw the video. And guess what he did? Laughed. He laughed about it. So people, you guys, I don't know, the YouTube audience, man, 
totally going down the drain. Yeah, and people yeah. say, say it all the time, you, you shouldn't talk about your subscribers that way. Well, they're not all subscribers. A lot of times it's just a whole lot of people just, just say nonsense. And I'm not talking about my subscribers because my subscribers are probably of a higher caliber. But the ones that make those remarks, and while they might be subscribers, they're not all subscribers, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. It's just the peanut gallery. It, it's definitely the peanut gallery, and I caught a lot of crap on, on this last video. In fact, it's not even getting the same views as the one before it did, which was receiving record numbers. Go, go figure. Yeah, so I received all that crap. Can you believe those people? I mean, it's the internet, so yeah. It is the internet, yeah, I get it. <laughs> one person actually told me, you know, Duckman, you might be burning out. You should probably consider a new career. <laughs> I do this because to me it's therapeutic. A lot of people, it's way over their heads and they can't handle it. This is why the comments are so bad is because they can't see themselves doing it. So when they see someone else doing it, you know, that's not possible. Duckman, you can't do that. Well, Duckman has consistently, time and time again, done what everybody said couldn't be done. It and it's, like it's, it fuels you. It does fuel me. And what, what the funniest part about it is, is I don't understand the mentality of the people that make those kinds of remarks because I have never ever in my life said anything like that to anybody. My answer has always been, is it possible? Yeah, if you got the time or the money. And in my case, I've had a lot of time, but none of the money. Things are possible <laughs> through time and money. Oh, oh here comes the it. boom. Speaking of all my time and money. Come here, buddy. Come on. Come on. Come to daddy. Come on. Come on, buddy. Come on. Come here. Let me see it. Come on. There's nothing in there. Come here. There's no food. There's no water in there. Come here. There he is. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Don't hump, Daddy. Stop trying to hump. He's pushing into me. That's hump stuff. <laughs> Come here. And launch him. Wipe out. Actually, that wasn't too bad. That's actually a pretty good landing. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. Stuck it. Yeah, he, he slid like a, like a sled when he hit the ground, though. But he, he still, he survived. Well, this is... A 72 stupid beetle. And of course you get the usual comments, I can't believe you're bothering to work on a super beetle. <laughs> it's got great sentimental value, you... Yeah, I want to use the word idiot again. But <laughs> I'm trying to refrain from calling people stupid. Because, you know, it's just that's the negativity I don't want to have. I really don't want to have that. But, oh my god, sometimes there's no other word. There's no other word, but this car has sentimental value because this car belonged to Robert's grandfather. So if it was special to his grandfather, and he remembers his grandfather having it, why shouldn't it be special to him? And while I'm not a fan of Super Beetles at all, really I'm not, the fact is that they are now considered special and vintage because the timeline has moved forward so many years. So these are starting to come into favor now, as well as things like Vanigans. Ugh. <laughs> but I'm starting to see so many Vanigans coming out of the woodwork. And I thought Volkswagen built, you know, like like six of them. Now we gotta get out this whole big sheet here too. And look behind here and see if we got any rust. There we go. Coming out. Actually, we look like we're pretty good back here. Yeah, that's not too bad. All right, how about this side? You hear Biddy screaming with his double collars on. <laughs> I think we're good over here. I don't see any rust on that side at all. All right, well, good. We just got that ledge over here that I need to repair. Get the rest of this out of here so it doesn't catch fire when welding. Oh, man. Oh, that's not a rust hole. That's a natural hole where the uh, air conditioning stuff passes. Okay, that stays. Probably supposed to be a grommet in there. In fact, there's what's left of the grommet. The hole was cut too big. <laughs> Needs bigger grommet. All right. Well, we'll get this cleaned up under here, and then we'll start preparing to start cutting in this area. As we're taking out that entire lip, 
all the way around here. Ooh, got myself. That's all this is coming out because it's kind of beat up and destroyed. Now we're dented over here. Something hit it from the inside. All right, well, decent summary. All right, I got my fan on, so I hope that's not too much noise for you guys, but uh, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's a crispy critter right here, and the more pushing that I do on it, the more a crack is starting to form. So we're gonna cut out a small space through here, probably a triangle, and we're, try, we're gonna try not to cut into the crescent. I don't think we need to. I think we could probably come about a quarter of an inch away from it with a straight line. In fact, I probably should make a, a mark, but we're gonna do an experimental cut because I don't know how far this rest, rust extends. And I will probably venture to say this entire area is rusted on the inside, but it doesn't mean it's a problem yet. This right here, this is problem. Boy, I'm still bleeding. No matter what I threw on it, I cleaned it and everything, it's still bleeding. <laughs> All right, well, let's start making some cuts and throw some more alcohol on that. Yeah, baby. All right, here we go. Yeah, no guard. Which means don't put yourself directly in alignment with it. I'll be cutting like this. Worst case scenario, I get hit in the finger. But yeah, okay. And one thing I don't have with me right now is my magnet. This is probably going to be hot. Oh yeah, she's hot. Woo! Yeah, I was rusting through. But only in that spot, from what I can tell. The metal over here actually looks good. But, right there, happens to align with it, there's no foam. Okay. Now, we're going to be um, digging some of this foam out of here. And we're going to see if we can dissolve it with something like uh, acetone or something. It's my curiosity. I've never tried to soak it in acetone or maybe even gasoline. Let's we'll see if we can get some of it out of that route. Otherwise, I'm going to be just stabbing it and picking at it, trying to pull it out. Probably not use my finger because this is sharp metal and that's stupid. Duck man, don't be dumb, duck man. <laughs> there you go. Oh, look! Might come out of one big piece. Ain't that a few? Oh, man. Wow. I was dicking around on the other side there. That was almost all of it. Just a little bit up in here. old wiring harness and this is as we talked about in your video this is going away is that right? no there's just some seam sealer over here that's cracking on it that's gonna be our patch it's gonna be cut out that size so we'll get that made up to go back in there not bad cool we've got a different rust pattern the other one rusted here Kind of a Mickey Mouse shape. This one rusted here, and this one just has a little hole here. We're going to cut pretty much this general area out.
Up here in the trunk area, we got another hole over here. It needs to be cut out. Let's go ahead and attack it. Oh, no juice! What happened? Otherwise, up here, there's no other holes. This is just a, a cover that can be replaced. Flange, got some glue on it, needs to be cleaned up, but it looks like it'll be fine. Put that right back where it belongs. Not my problem. Oh, that's shot. That's for the uh, gas tank filler. <laughs> Okay, that hole's cut. All right, you remember in a previous video we talked about the doors being loose and one of the things to check for before you buy a beetle. This is usually where the rust begins. Right here, just in front of the fender. And the A-pillar is actually right here. So the hinge is behind this. So this rust starts, and what it is is the wheel turns here and throws stones at it. So typically the paint here doesn't last. So it's good to put a lot of undercoating on it. Looks like somebody did, but hey, even that got blown off. So this area in here needs to be cut out and you put a patch in there before it gets any worse. All right. That's why I did it blindly. I was leaning behind that fender on purpose just in case the damn thing decided to grab and it did. All right, there's our rust. Looks like it's only the outer layer. That's good news. It doesn't even extend into here. This is just a, yeah, it's just a lip on the outside. This is outer skin only stuff. This is full of dirt as usual because this is the bottomless pit. Um, or maybe it's not. No, it might be behind that. Oh no, I barely cut it there. This is the bottomless pit on this side. Here's the divider. This is the bottomless pit here. If you look in the corners underneath your hood hinges and look straight down, if you can, this is where things fall and get lost for all eternity. Typically you'll find a lot of dirt in there. I usually find money. I always find a spoon. I don't know why. Always a, a kitchen spoon. Like a stainless steel, you know, spoon for eating breakfast cereal. <laughs> There's always one in my cars for some reason. So I have a whole collection of different non-matching spoons in my kitchen just for that reason. But anyway, this is what's going on in here. This doesn't look too bad. This can be patched up relatively easily. I'm just going to clean up this edge and it will make a piece for it. And that's why I leaned behind that fender, so I was out of harm's way. An exploding disc is an exploding disc, whether you have a guard on it or not. Just, yeah, it could have easily killed me or taken out an eye or something, or in case of Wild Bill, an ear. And uh, yeah, long story, you guys had to follow him on Facebook to understand what happened. But anyway, uh, yeah, I'll put a new disc on that one. But yeah, you don't put yourself in direct line with it. You know, you gotta kinda lean it away and make sure your fingers aren't even in line with it if you can. I don't know. I don't know what to tell people that blow things up on themselves. I've blown up many, but I've never once hit myself because I've never been in harm's way. Now, I've caught a ricochet, though. It'll bounce off of something else, and it smacked me in the back of my hand, and my hand went numb like I punched a cinder block, but no cuts. <laughs> anyway, let's keep All cutting. Right, down here in the engine compartment, we discovered that uh, this little shelf over here is... template. Oh, well you know what time it is. It's creativity juice time. <laughs> mm. Needed that. Figured no better time for a break. But we got that hole cut out of there. We got the one up under the fender cut out there. Good. We've got this guy over here cut out as well as the one on the inside that mates with it. In fact you can look right through and see. Wow, all kinds of sirens and stuff now. That was a two hole. That was a, a compound rust out, if you will. There's two different planes in which it rusted on. One is vertical and one is diagonal. Um, so we're gonna patch those individually, probably doing the horizontal one first. Um, not horizontal, the diagonal one. And then the vertical one second. Yeah, creativity juice is already kicking in, isn't it? <laughs> first couple sips, imagine that. Then we found this one back here, which we didn't notice before. We're gonna patch that up. While I'm back here, I'm probably gonna go ahead and get the um, the old uh, air chisel and chip the rest of that lip out of there and just get rid of it. 
And at the same time, while we're here, we're also going to take off the lip for the deck lid seal because we talked about putting a Mexican seal on here instead. That's good. Your apron has rust, but it's not rusted through. That should be a matter of uh, wire brush cleaning and then treating with the uh, cat, cat piss. Uh, again, not my, my task. I'm just handling where there's holes. You know, patchwork. In fact, I just named this uh, beetle today. This beetle's name is Patrick. <laughs> Patrick the Beetle. Now, whether or not uh, Robert chooses to keep the name, that's up to him. But I call it Patrick because this beetle is put together with a bunch of patchwork. It's not a bunch of big patches, just a bunch of little patches, but nonetheless, patchwork. Yep, this is Patrick. There you go. He's not even green, so I can't say he's Irish. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I better get an airline back here. Go grab the air chisel and get ready to uh, start cleaning some of this stuff up. I wonder how much of it's going to come off with just a, even just a screwdriver or a pair of pliers if I just gently pry it. Some of it might just come out and then hit the rest of it with a grinder. Just take the, uh, the welded flange off. Once you grind through it a little bit, it just kind of peels off, so not too much to it. All right, well, we're in a good spot. I'm gonna take a break for a couple minutes. Enjoy my rum. Yes, it's rum again today. It's not bourbon for a change. I'm back to drinking rum like I did a couple years ago. I like to shake it up once in a while. All right, well, we're in a good spot. Uh, this was the easiest part of the shop. A lot of Bondo back here. This might have been rear ended at some point with that amount of Bondo back here. There's a dent in the crease right there. It tells me the bumper probably got pushed right into it. Alright, well, that's good little boo-boo repair right here. I'll handle that when I pull the welder out. Oh, I just found more rust. More rust than I didn't see before. All right, you can see you. where the vibration from the air chisel shook more rust loose. So this entire little shelf that's in here needs to come out. All except for maybe, maybe the first quarter of an inch it attaches it to the car. I dropped the tool, duck man. That's why I was bending that disc. This is how I usually wear them out. <laughs> Whenever I drop my angle grinder, I always make sure to bend that disc back and forth, and I mean, I, I bend it aggressively. Because if there's a crack in it, it's going to show. Because you don't want to run a cracked disc. Because it will start throwing pieces off at hardcore, and it'll... It'll trim you down the, to nothing. I mean, it'll cut you to pieces if it explodes. I'm not going to do that today. Alright. That whole shelf is now gone. Boop, boop. Ooh, zoom out, buddy. There you go, buddy. All right, totally out. I'll make a new piece. Probably out of Gregory the bus, bend it into shape. These put pieces here, these pieces here are extremely expensive. For those of you that haven't priced them before, yes, you can buy them. You can have them pre-made and just drop them in, but <laughs> I'll spend that extra 30 minutes or something and make one. It's not a big deal to me. But anyway, that's what we got going on in there. Now the rust has been officially removed. I don't think there's much more rust to cut off of this. Um, the last thing that I offered to do was to take off the hood seal lip all the way around here because it's got some rusting issues. And yeah, you can see it around the bottom too. As I said, let's just go ahead and put a Mexican seal on the same as he did on uh, Eleanor. That just works out a lot better. And he liked the idea, so. That's the last thing we need to attack on here, and then we're done cutting. 
Now we got to, and then we just got to start making new patches for the rest of the car. Yeah, we're getting somewhere. Whoop. started it usually comes up pretty easy. Dig in because you will punch a hole through the body. You just want to kind of shave off the lip here. the garbage that came off. <laughs> Car will look so much better without it. There's just a couple little weld buttons here. show you what we did up close. All right, you can see one of the little weld buttons right there. Ground off, well, essentially chopped off the whole thing. You know, some of the welds are holding pretty good. The ones through here were not. These were pretty rusted. And around the middle, those were so rusted, they fell off. <laughs> Over here, still needs a little bit of chisel work. Up here we need to hit with the grinder because those buttons are still holding on there pretty good. So a little grinder work in here and it'll be done. And there's a little tiny rust hole that I found and I put the chisel into it so I'll be fixing that with the uh, welder. So I'll just, see there's no metal even there. So it's not like I just poked a hole, I actually just knocked the uh, rust through. Okay, well, we're getting somewhere. Yay! But I think that might be wrapping this up for today because We've got a Volkswagen club meeting coming up tonight. And what that means is I gotta get the hell out of here in about an hour or so. I'm supposed to take the fast back. It looks like Patrick here is blocking her in. So I don't think uh, Ruby's coming out to the uh, meeting tonight, which means I don't get a raffle ticket. Bummer, oh, big bummer. So anyways, you guys, as always, licky, likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck the dingle belly so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out DougShit.net for all my different social media links. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.